If you asked me what my favorite Zelda game of all time is, I would say Majora's Mask. You guys know I love this game, and apparently, I'm not alone. I'm pretty sure Zelda Williams, the daughter of Robin Williams, said that this is her favorite one too. And when the actual real-life Zelda is telling you it's the best one, the conversation is over. Which means I won. Tonally, this is one of the most standout titles in the entire Zelda franchise. This game is weird and it is twisted. There is an omnipresent and undeniable feeling of discomfort bleeding into every aspect of the game. It is mysterious, it is ominous, and it is profound. It's the kind of game that is open to wild speculative theories because of how many questions are still left open, even as the narrative concludes, and uh... Well, what am I saying? You already know all this stuff. By now, I would have expected more in the way of Majora's Mask ROM hacks with all of this in mind, considering that this is a sentiment that is shared by a lot of people. Of course, Ocarina of Toim hacking has progressed to the point that it's almost superfluous because anything Majora does can technically be replicated in some way in Ocarina now, since the basis of both games is already very similar, and ROM hackers are basically wizards at this point. That being said, I was still curious as to what a Majora's Mask ROM hack would look like, and today, we have one potential answer, and that is Zelda Revival by Don Camillo, released just last month. Now if the name Don Camillo sounds familiar, it should. This was the creator of Master of Time, which is an ocarina hack I played all the way back in 2020. This was a massive, massive game with an entirely original world to explore that was comparable in size and scope to the original, complete with its own art direction and music. I still consider it to be one of the most impressive ROM hacks of its kind, even though some people disliked the ending. Suffice it to say, Master of Time alone constitutes an impressive ROM hacking portfolio, which is why I knew I just had to check out Zelda Revival the second I heard about it. And it's why I'm telling you to check it out just as soon as the video is over. And you better do it too, or you'll get a copy of the Smeagol game in your stocking. And that game isn't very fun, is it precious? Zelda Revival follows a spooky zombie version of Link who has been Frankenstein back to life by this mad doctor for the express purpose of gaining entrance to this spooky castle thing for reasons beyond our understanding. It's up to you to traverse this haunted wasteland and attempt to gain access to the castle and kill whoever or whatever stands in your way. Right off the bat, the narrative is very interesting. A game like this would have been perfect on Halloween, but really, I'm down for this twisted shit any time of the year. And it's a great fit for Majora's Mask considering that that game was already very ghoulish and haunted in its own right. The first thing to note about this game is that it is relatively brief, albeit deceptively so. The size and scope of this game is way too big to call a mini-hack, although the pacing is quick enough such that I can't call it a massive hack either. You can beat it in about 4 hours altogether, but that's because there is no fat on it. The best way to describe this game is to say that it's a very dense experience where little to no time playing it is wasted. There's usually some purpose to whatever it is you're doing. If you're already familiar with the gameplay loop of Majora's Mask and what things are possible with what tools, you should already have a very good grasp on what you're supposed to do, and it doesn't really pull any wonky, unintuitive shit on you, so you're not likely to get stuck for any length of time. Thankfully, in those rare moments where it did happen, I was able to consult a Snooplax livestream where he beat the entire thing, so thank you Snooplax for playing this game, you have officially saved Christmas. In general, the game is not that hard, except for this one part where you have to shoot ice arrows to create platforms and then swap to the Zora to jump up to a ledge. That's the real trick with this hack, making sense out of choosing Majora over Ocarina. This game achieves that by utilizing features that were unique to Majora, such as the transformations, which are used very liberally. You got all these sick Goron ramps in this one Deku playground minigame where you have to fly around and kill everything. That was a lot of fun. You'll see a lot of familiar faces returning from Majora, like the Stal children who all speak to you if you wear the captain's mask, even though they mostly tell you the same thing. And they also got my man Tupac in there. Apparently he was hiding inside of a ROM hack this entire time. In terms of difficulty, it's a pretty reasonable game, although there are some slightly annoying areas, mostly involving Goron ramp tricks and some very incidental moments in which the combat is not so great. But that's par for the course for these old Zelda titles. 
This is one of the few ROM hacks where you're probably more likely to actually get killed by the enemies instead of getting stuck on puzzles. That being said, there are plenty of upgrades and collectibles to balance everything out. I'm always telling you guys how much I appreciate games that facilitate and encourage exploration. This game rewards the curious player very generously with heart pieces and bottles and fairies that you're really gonna need because the game makes you fight three iron knuckles back to back which is a complete dickhead. Even after finding a lot of the health upgrades, I was wondering how many secret collectibles and upgrades I missed. From what I understand, you can actually get the sword upgrade in this game, which I didn't end up doing. That might have made the iron knuckles easier. The game also has a super secret second ending involving one of the most bizarro boss fights I have ever been a witness to, which I am not going to spoil for you because I honestly think it will be more effective just to let you see it for yourself. Visually, the game is pretty much the same as Majora's Mask, but considering this was already a visually robust game on the Nintendo 64, that's just alright by me. But what I really appreciated about this hack was the music. Don Camilo's previous Master of Time had a robust and diverse soundtrack that took inspiration from many, many sources that I hadn't heard in any other ROM hack before. Like that game had me looking up Latin American folk musicians from the 60s. That kind of shit is the epitome of why I enjoy ROM hacks in fan games, just taking bits and pieces from various artistic sources and rearranging them into a good ass video game. Kinda like when Plumber for All Seasons cited the scenery in Northern Germany as a reference for the visual attitude. Zelda Revival carries with it its own robust soundtrack that mixes atmosphere and whimsy in the right moments to create a very impeccable spooky atmosphere. Zelda's Revival is an excellent demonstration of the potential for Majora's Mask ROM hacks, and even in the face of rapidly evolving Ocarina of Time mods, it is impressive and unique. It really nailed the classic horror setting, haunted buildings, graveyards, all that good stuff, and while some might say it's out of season, it's just a generally good game, and there's never a bad season for that. On the other hand, I'm also just very happy to see ROM hackers branching out to Majora, and I hope that in the future, it will get even more attention. There is a lot of potential for big time ROM hacks, what with the time mechanic and the mask transformations, I would love to see where it goes from here. And that's all for today, but remember to tune in to tomorrow's video. You better get lots of sleep though, because it's a little bit dreamy. And with that, Merry Christmas!